Today is Friday, November 6th. Welcome to this edition of Nevada County Now. Today's episode, we're talking elections, COVID, fair food, and more. Hello and welcome to Nevada County Now. I'm your host, Cole Pettit. Election day has come and gone, but we're still waiting for the official results of many elections. Most of the local races are still too close to call by current counts. The last update was put out on election night. The Secretary of State's office lists an approximate number of 29,900 ballots to still be counted in Nevada County. I spoke with an elections official this morning, and they stated that an update should be available by the close of business today. So be on the lookout for that at the website listed below. We've seen an increase of 53 COVID-19 cases this week, including 23 cases in one day, which is the third largest one-day increase we've seen since the pandemic began. Our total now sits at 688 confirmed cases, 73 cases are currently active with three hospitalizations, and the death toll has increased to nine. For now, we continue to be in the state's orange tier, but should this trend continue, we may be headed back to a more restrictive tier. Interim Public Health Officer Dr. Richard Johnson said, although we remain in the orange tier this week, we are seeing many of our neighboring counties go backwards in the tier system and are seeing the case rates in Nevada County trend in the same direction. The state's tier data represents a seven-day lag, however. We have saw a dramatic increase of 23 new cases this Monday. We continue to urge everyone to stay diligent about refraining from gatherings with friends and family as well as going into the office if you were feeling sick. Most of our recent COVID-19 cases are from people letting their guard down, participating in social gatherings without masking or distancing, traveling out of the area where transmission rates are higher, and going into work while carrying COVID-19 and transmitting it throughout the workplace. If Nevada County's COVID-19 data meets the red substantial tier next week and the following week, Nevada County will move backwards into the red tier requiring business sectors to lessen their capacity and modify their operations. The County of Nevada continues to remind residents that to support our business community and lessen business restrictions, we need to be even more diligent about refraining from activities that are, that are contributing to our recent increase in COVID-19 cases, social gatherings, and going into work with COVID-19-like symptoms. The data can easily move in either direction, and if we want to keep moving forward, it is incumbent upon us as a community to embrace safety and continue to reduce the spread. For the most up-to-date information available, visit MyNevadaCounty.com slash coronavirus. If you're looking for something to do here in town this weekend, consider stopping by the fairgrounds and picking up some tasty food. Sonora Slater went over there this morning to find out more about this event. Hi, this is Sonora Slater with Nevada County Now. We're here today at the Nevada County Fairgrounds to explore Butler Amusement's new setup. They have several booths set up in a row where you can get fun treats such as funnel cake and deep fried Oreos while also safely adhering to the COVID-19 regulations. I'm the uh, vice president of Butler Amusements, which is a carnival that has played the uh, Nevada County Fair for about the last 30 years and among other fairs. Uh, so uh, a lot of our employees, like everybody, uh, haven't worked all year. So we thought we would start doing some drive through uh, food uh, festivals, as you would say, um, throughout California and keep some people working and generate a little revenue for the fair itself. So we've, uh, this is about number six that we've done and we got a couple more after here. Cool. Um, could you tell us a little bit about uh, what the setup is here and how people can participate if they want to? Well, people can participate by driving through, coming in gate one. Uh, they'll get handed a menu. We have six stands on site here, corn dogs, cotton candy, chicken and waffles, funnel cakes, kettle corn, you know, all the good food, all the good fattening fair food. Anyways, You'll stop at each stand individually, order what you want, and as you're done ordering, you just move out and head out the gate. Cool, sounds easy. Um, is there anything else you'd want to say about kind of um, why you guys are doing this or why would you encourage Well, to we're, we're doing it, like I said, to keep some employees working um, and to generate some revenue for the fair. And we love the Nevada County community and, and that we picked this one specially because we enjoy coming up here. 
Uh, after talking to Lance and some of the workers, we decided to drive through and get some food of our own. So here we are at the funnel cake booth. For both. Uh, chocolate, please. Chocolate, chocolate, hi. Here you go. Thank you so much. Could you talk a little bit about um, what your booth has to offer? Uh, we have all the deep fried stuff, the good, the munchies, the good treats. We have funnel cakes, deep fried Oreos, deep fried Twinkies. Um, that's all we have right now. It says cones, but we don't have cones. It's too cold for that. But um, we have really delicious funnel cakes, the best you've ever had before. <laughs> Um, so we were talking to Lance earlier and he mentioned that part of the reason that you guys were doing this is because it's been hard because a lot of the fairs have gotten shut down. Could you talk a little bit how this has been helpful um, to have the opportunity? Yes, it's been extremely helpful. We've been going through um, a very tough time this year. I have a brand new baby and a seven year old. So um, it's been super tough. Luckily, some fair has been letting us do these driver events. We're very cautious with everything. Um, my no it keeps slipping, but I'm touching over here. <laughs> Sorry. Um, we've been very cautious with everything, uh, but it's it's been super helpful. We, um, you know, we rely on this stuff. You know, I I, I had a part time job two times this year at Walmart and the, and the car selling cars because um, I, you know I needed to stay afloat. So when they started letting us come back and doing different events, it really really helped us. We were able, you know, to stay afloat and I could support my family. Awesome. Um, have you guys had any difficulties um, putting together the drive through events and trying to make it happen? Um, a lot of people were against it at first uh, because, you know, the whole pandemic and they're scared, but we really do the best we can, uh, you know, as far as, um, you know, masks, gloves, we have hand sanitizer, spray, we wipe down our trays, we don't, it's non-contact, everything's put into go containers, um, and all of us are, we, you know, temperature checked in the morning. So, um, yeah, it's been difficult. People don't really want, didn't really want to help us at first, but they started getting used to it when they seen that we're real willing to go above and beyond for the restrictions of COVID. You know, we're willing to do anything to work with, you know, we have, you know, different counties and it's different rules every time, but, you know, we're, we want to do it. Awesome. Thank you so much for your time. Thank you. Some people have expressed concerns about the fact that the event with Butler Amusements did proceed. While the drive through Treat Street event to support local nonprofits that was talked about earlier this year never happened. Wendy Oaks, the deputy manager of the Nevada County Fairgrounds, explained that Butler Amusements is a longtime partner of the fairgrounds and is holding pop up food events like this one to support the small, family owned businesses that operate the food stands. However, she made sure to emphasize that this is in no way meant to replace Treat Street. We love Treat Street, and we know the community does as well, she said. We worked with Treat Street vendors in July and August to organize a drive through Treat Street event. However, there weren't enough booths interested at that time, which we completely respect and support. We're hopeful the level of interest will change and that one will happen in the future. Back to you, Cole. Thanks, Sonora. Temperatures have dropped fairly significantly, and we've even gotten a little rain. This appears like it will be the trend for the coming week and perhaps more. The National Weather Service in Sacramento has issued a winter storm watch, which began at 10 a.m. this morning and is set to last until Sunday. Six to 14 inches of snow is forecast in the upper elevations. Squaw Valley tweeted out this shot this morning, showing that the first snows of the season have arrived. Be careful on the roads as conditions may be slippery, and if you're planning to travel to higher elevations, be aware that chain controls may be possible. November is Native American Heritage Month, and tomorrow, November 7th, is Nisanon Heritage Day. For more on the celebration and how you can get involved, let's once again turn it over to Sonora Slater. Thanks, Cole. The Nisanon tribe has made their homes in the foothill of Nevada, Sierra, Yuba, Sutter, and Placer counties in Northern California for thousands of years, and still very much has a presence in our community. With November being Native American Heritage Month, the Nisanon people have decided to combine two of their annual events, Nisanon Heritage Day and a Harvest Dinner fundraiser, into a month-long cultural educational opportunity. Beginning on November 1st, the event will include a plethora of digital content based around the work the California Heritage Indigenous Research Project, or CHIRP, has done in the past 10 years. 
It will cover the history of Nisenan people and the story of the Nevada City Rancheria through a combination of interviews, photos, video, song, and a new podcast. According to the event's Facebook page, it will also involve a fundraiser for CHIRP's annual program budget with a goal of $30,000. Participants can either donate as an individual or collaborate as a fundraising team. There will be a grand prize for the individual or team who raises the most funds. And in addition, a randomly selected winner will be chosen each week from everyone who made a donation that week. The grand prize includes a personal tour with tribal spokesperson Shelley Covert for up to 10 people of the Nisanon Tribute Loop on the Deer Creek Tribute Trail, four weeks of Mountain Bounty Farm vegetable share with local delivery, and more to be announced. You can find more information about setting up a fundraising team at charity.gofundme.com slash Nisanon Heritage Month. The CHIRP mission is to preserve, protect, and perpetuate Nisanon culture, and they urged community members to get involved in doing just that through this fundraiser and through the engaging month-long event. Back to you, Cole. Thanks, Sonora. With the weather changing and some moisture in the air, while it's not official, it seems like fire season is dwindling. We would like to take this opportunity to thank all of our firefighters who have worked so hard to keep all of us safe. We'll leave you with a montage of some of their efforts. Remember, stay safe, take care of each other. We'll see you next week. Thank you.